Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Each week, we bring you stories from great farms and ranches all across the U.S. Today, we're looking back at some of our favorite day in the life stories. And now, a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Week after week, our crews get a chance to visit many outstanding operations and share the stories of the farmers and ranchers who work to raise quality, wholesome beef. This week, we're revisiting some of our favorite day in the life stories, so let's get started. We begin in Nebraska, where Brian Baxter visited with Craig Uden just before he took the reins as the 2017 NCBA president. As the sun rises over the Dar feedlot in central Nebraska, you'll likely find Craig Uden starting his day at the place where his passion for the beef industry took off. I basically was born into the business. Uh, when I was a young, young kid, uh, we had a small feedlot and farming operation in eastern Nebraska. I interned out in this country and, and these guys were, had a dream to put a feed yard together. So they would bought an old 1500 head feed yard and we started uh, Dar Feedlot back in 1982. And uh, that was the year I interned. The next year I came out and they said we needed somebody to run it. So for five bucks an hour, I uh, decided to take a shot at uh, putting this thing together. And today uh, we've got two locations. We feed 45,000 head of cattle. And uh, along with that, uh, I've got a cow-calf operation, my wife, and, and actually my kids even have some cows here. The early years of Craig's career were tough ones in the beef industry, but they helped to shape his management style. He's always taken a hands-on approach, and that helped him gain a foothold on the leadership ladder of the many beef industry organizations he's served. When I was a kid, uh, my dad was the first one to start the county organization in, in that county, and today that's still one of the largest county organizations in the state of Nebraska. And so I followed along with him to meetings, and I got involved in my local and was president here and, and moved on up and, and held different positions within the Nebraska Cattlemen. And, and uh, one day I was asked to join the Beef Council, and I said I would, and, and I did, and I never knew it would lead uh, uh, as in-depth as it has, but uh, I believe in giving back. But I think what's so invaluable about being a member of any organization is what you take home and how you better utilize the resources and understand uh, uh, make your operation better. You know, we always think when we get out of school our, our education's over, but that's, that's where it's just beginning. So uh, I think you have to continue to learn because the, the world changes every day and uh, you got to be able to change with it. As Craig moved up the leadership ranks in Nebraska, his willingness to serve his fellow producers made him a natural fit for posts at the national level. And he quickly saw there were additional opportunities that would allow him to add to his understanding of the industry he's passionate about. I was going to sort cattle in Colorado and I'd just been elected to uh, become a beef council member. So I stopped in and watched an operating committee. And so I, I uh, interviewed for operating and uh, stayed around there a long time on the operating committee, moved up through the federation and, and uh, became vice chair and chairman and uh, wasn't sure at that time I still have a few things to do with my home operations but uh, threw my hat in on the policy because originally I was way back in policy. so. Moved over to the policy chairs and went up that way, so I've had both sides. Serving in checkoff and policy leadership roles has given Craig a unique perspective on nearly every facet of NCBA and the work it does on behalf of the industry. In the year ahead, his experiences have also shaped the priorities Craig will pursue during his term as NCBA president. We're going to stay focused on trade. Trade is a very important aspect to the beef industry. Currently right now we've got numbers growing. We have the highest quality, most wholesome, safe beef in the world. And all we need is access to showcase our beef 
and we will have plenty of consumers. If we want to maintain and grow this herd and stay profitable and, and increase prices and have a vibrant industry, we have to have outlets to sell our product. And right now, uh, that's been one of our hangups. Uh, we've, we've done a lot in the export world, but we need to do more because that is, uh, that's our future. Beyond trade, maintaining a strong partnership between NCBA and state cattle organizations is a cornerstone of Craig's focus. He knows that working together is the best way to advance the entire industry, and by networking with others and sharing information, every member of the beef family benefits. Without state and national partnerships, without the states, we have no national. We bring all these uh, ideas, and as well as challenges, to the organization. Everybody gets to see what the big issues are, how we're going to solve those issues, and that's very, very important. And then when we do solve those issues, then it goes back to the country and, and it can be shared with all the producers. I think the beef industry is a, a great community. I think everybody's open and honest with each other. That they don't always agree with each other, but uh, the freedom to operate and operate their business, but just the interaction working back and forth is very positive. I'm a gate to plate thinker. I think it's very important for people to understand how, how the industry works and how they plug in. A lot of hands touch our product and I think the better people understand the whole of our industry, they're better prepared for the challenges that we face and, and some of the solutions that we find to move the industry forward. From market prices to beef trade issues and battles over government regulation, there's no shortage of challenges for cattle producers. But by working together through NCBA, Craig believes there's a strong, positive future for his own operation and for the cattle industry overall. I'm very bullish about the cattle industry. I know we're in a rough spot. We've been in a rough spot. We've been in before. But when we have these challenges, we always have to look for opportunities. We've got a lot of young talent coming aboard. We've got a lot of interest. We need all that talent because as, as the industry changes, we talk about the millennial consumer changing, but also our producers are changing. So we have to continue to uh, evolve, and it's an ever-evolving business. Well, I think the future of the operation is bright. We're working with the uh, sons now, some of the original owners. You know, it's been a, a very proud moment for us to bring this up from 1500 to the current capacity today. And uh, I think uh, the future is very bright for our operations as well as the entire beef industry. Every day, the NCBA staff in Denver and in Washington, D.C. work on the issues that matter to cattle producing families. You can help in the fight for our industry's future by becoming an NCBA member. Just call 1-866-USA-BEEF or go online to the website beefusa.org. Still to come on Cattlemen and Cattlemen, some people have other careers before they catch the ranching bug. But wait till you hear what one Tennessee producer did before joining the cattle business. Plus, we visit an outstanding family-run seed stock operation in North Dakota. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Stay Tough Fence will last three times longer and is four times stronger than low tensile fencing. High tensile wire solid vertical stays, and tight fixed knots all provide superior strength. You will use fewer posts, saving time, labor, and money. Protect your investment for generations with Stay Tough Fence. Stay strong. Stay tight. Stay tough. Forward. It's more than a direction. It's mandatory. Because the beef business rewards the progressive, the doers. The ones who know what it takes to go easy on cattle and never set them back. So set your eyes on the horizon, turn your back to the wind, and move your herd the only way you know. Forward. Vista Vaccines. Always ahead. There is a new world out there, revealing itself in unpredictable ways. A world that demands more from the land and those who grow, farm, and build on it. This new world calls for the ingenuity to get more out of it, while preserving as much as we can. After all, to stay ahead of tomorrow, we need to be equipped for it today.
Welcome back. Just before the 2017 Cattle Industry Convention held in Nashville, Tennessee, we visited a very unique cattle operation. The owner had a successful career as a rocket scientist, and the farm manager has expanded into the restaurant business. Brian Baxter takes us to Tennessee for a closer look at Deer Valley Farm. It's not rocket science is a familiar saying, but at Deer Valley Farms in Fayetteville, Tennessee, rocket science is how it all started. Deer Valley is owned by Dr. Fred Clark and his wife, Renda Clark, and their daughter, Kim. Dr. Clark was in the weapons defense systems business in the early days, uh, sold that business, moved from Huntsville to, to Fayetteville, and has become a full-time resident at the farm. Deer Valley Farm is a a purebred Angus operation that's been in existence for 29 years. We encompass about 5,500 acres in Fayetteville, Tennessee, Lincoln County. We row crop 15 to 1,800 acres, depending on the year every year. We grow the majority of our own feed in-house. To create top quality animals, the philosophy at Deer Valley is to build a solid cow herd, combining proven genetics and good structure. They believe this allows them to offer bulls that will let their customers focus on other economically relevant traits. Our drivers here in the Angus business are building a cow herd with great cow families and producing commercial bulls to send our customers out in the countryside. Yes, we put emphasis on maternal traits here. We put emphasis on building cows here, but in the situation our bull customers are in, they don't have to worry as much about that because we've done it for them. They can select on, on traits that will change their bottom line from a carcass standpoint or a growth standpoint. Not only does the team at Deer Valley take pride in the animals they offer for sale, but also in the customer service they provide. At the end of the day, if you don't have a loyal, satisfied customer base, uh, you don't have a business. And so those guys have to have faith in us they have to have faith in our product, and uh, we offer one of the best guarantees in the business. Uh, we believe when a guy comes here to buy a commercial bull, he's making an investment in this program. We guarantee that bull the first year, no matter what. The cattle business is the number one ag industry in the state of Tennessee, and the team at Deer Valley is proud that the 2017 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA trade show will bring folks back to Nashville and they welcome everyone to the farm for a visit. I think it's a tremendous honor to have the NCBA convention to come back to Nashville. Uh, I think a lot of the country doesn't realize the number of cattle that are scattered amongst the hills here in Tennessee. Hey, we always have the door open at Deer Valley, and every year the convention is in Nashville. We get lots of visitors. We welcome them all. We'll have people on the farm, cattle on display all week, and would love to have as many visitors as we can get come down from Nashville. A morning spent looking at great cattle can work up an appetite, and where better to eat than a place owned by cattle producers. In addition to his duties at Deer Valley, J.P. and his wife Jackie own a restaurant not far from the farm. Well, J J.P. Has, has said for years since we've been married that he wanted to own a restaurant, and I told him if you ever buy a restaurant, it will be with your next wife. I was just driving by one day and I saw the for sale sign and I was like, well, the Hickory House is for sale and he jumped all over it. The Hickory House is a passion of mine that I've always wanted. Uh, we are a barbecue and certified Angus beef steakhouse. Because we're in the Angus business, we believe in certified Angus beef so much and what it's done for the Angus industry. We really wanted to, to open a certified Angus beef restaurant. Because the Hickory House had been a barbecue for years, we kept the barbecue idea. As you can tell by looking at me, I've always loved to cook, loved to eat, uh, loved to grill, barbecue, smoke, anything. And so we decided to make it barbecue and steaks. As a producer, you think you spend every day trying to improve a beef product, and we do. But you put yourself on this side of the table, this side of the industry, and it will open your eyes. I promise you, I have lots to learn, but I've learned so much about the beef industry since we opened this restaurant that I'd have never dreamed that I needed to know. In addition to the best steak and barbecue around, folks come from all over for the made from scratch side dishes, as well as a big helping of friendly Southern hospitality. People drive um, from 
Alabama, Lawrenceburg, other counties, surrounding counties, surrounding towns, and they compliment me on the, the buffet and how fresh the vegetables are and how you can just tell they're from scratch. We have cooks that are old-fashioned cooks, and they cook just like your grandmother cooked. We're located about an hour and 15 minutes straight south of Nashville. If you're here for the NCBA convention, you can ride right on down and find us. We'd love to feed you. From the farm to the table in Tennessee, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Want to rewatch an episode of Cattlemen to Cattlemen or catch up on anything you've missed? Then visit our YouTube page. You'll find replays of all of our shows filled with educational segments and producer profiles from around our country. It's also another chance to see Baxter Black. So check us out at youtube.com slash Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, see how one North Dakota operation is working to deliver high performance bulls and heifers to their customers. Plus, we'll head to Northeastern Colorado for a closer look at a top flight Red Angus producer. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Say goodbye to your toughest pasture and rangeland weeds for good. Because one product offers season-long control, handles the widest spectrum of broadleaf weeds, and clears the way for increased forage with greater grazing flexibility. So you get more beef per acre at a cost that can't be beat. It's Grazon Next HL Herbicide. And if it's in your pastures, plain and simple, weeds won't be. What does it mean to be an American cattleman? It means you have what it takes where it counts. On the inside. At Ritchie, we understand that. It's what's on the inside that defines us. We share the same values, ingenuity, commitment, sense of pride. These are the values that built this country. They're the values that built this company. Ritchie, proud to be a partner to the American cattlemen since 1921. Blaze a trail to Phoenix, Arizona and the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the cattle industry's biggest convention with education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can check out the huge NCBA Trade Show, outstanding entertainment, and more. Don't miss the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Phoenix, January 31st through February 2nd. Visit BeefUSA.org for more. Welcome back. Seed stock producers represent the foundation of the cattle industry, the place where genetic improvement begins. But building a high quality seed stock operation takes time and patience and a solid understanding of where the beef industry is headed. Brian Baxter introduces us to a North Dakota family that has dedicated themselves to providing functional Angus cattle of the highest caliber. In the rolling grasslands of North Dakota, Chad and Julie Ellingson and their five children have been steadily building a reputation of providing high quality Angus cattle. Ellingson Angus um, was formed when my husband Chad and I were married in 1995, but our history in the Angus business and the cattle business goes much further than that. Um, it's where my family has been ranching um, since the 1940s with the registered business and my great grandfather homesteaded and we're excited to be able to um, carry on that tradition and to welcome our children into it as well. We're in the northern Great Plains in the southern part of North Dakota. We're in a semi-arid region that uh, gets about 12 to 14 inches of rainfall per year. We've been blessed this year to get uh, about double that rainfall so the green grass is not normal here but on most years it can be challenging at times. We live in the land of extremes uh, here in the northern Great Plains, we can get to negative 40 degrees in the wintertime with uh, tremendous wind chills, and we can get to the triple digits in the summertime. The real world approach at Ellingson Angus has been shaped by the experiences of both Chad and Julie, who've had long careers in the beef industry. Julie currently serves as executive director of the North Dakota Stockmen's Association, and Chad has an extensive background in the AI business. That experience has helped them blend the newest technology and cattle selection tools with practical management of their herd. 
I spend much of my professional career working for the North Dakota Stockmen's Association. I think what's unique about it is by being a rancher myself, it gives me perspective. Um, I know exactly what my members, um, what keeps them laying awake at night. I know what's on their to-do list. I know about their hopes and their dreams um, on their operations. And also to be up on what issues are impacting our industry on a broader level, both nationally and internationally. And that helps us here on the ranch at Ellings and Angus engage and be an active part of that process. I was in the AI business for about 19 years. I, I had the opportunity to travel the world and uh, work with and work with and learn from the, some of the brightest minds in the industry. We're privileged to own uh, multiple uh, AI sires along with some major AI studs. Some of the bulls that are currently uh, uh, being utilized uh, across the nation, probably across the world uh, in terms, would be a bull by the name of Ellingson Identity, a bull that would have topped our sale uh, five years ago. He's a proven Cavanese bull, uh, becoming a very highly maternal bull. Uh, we're selling a lot of Cavanese sons of him. By using some of their own AI sires, along with a battery of other well-known Angus bulls, Ellingson Angus is able to deliver high-performing bulls and heifers to their customers on sale day. But the Ellingsons never take their eye off the traits that are most important to their customers and the industry. We take a real world approach to raising cattle. We raise cattle very much like our commercial bull customers. Our cattle are out on, on large range pastures. They are grazing about six to seven to eight months per, uh, per year. We do have some supplemental feeding during the winter time when the snow gets too deep for them to, to get out and graze. But we try to raise them just like our commercial bull customers do because then we can call and produce cattle that will suit not only what we're trying to produce, but they, what the kind of cattle our bull customers are trying to produce. I think when we get out and, and I get the opportunity to work uh, with my commercial producers, I realize that they gotta have some performance in those calves. They have to weigh up at uh, weaning time to have some performance uh, at that time and also performance as we follow them through the feedlot. But uh, also compounded with that, they have to have some maternal capability. They have to have structural integrity to get out and cover the land and produce a, a big calf and, and breed back again. On sale day, that functionality is important. As seed stock producers, the Ellingsons know their customers demand cattle that will perform anywhere their buyers take them. Our average bull cell customer would, um, would be a cow-calf producer, um, probably resides here in North Dakota or in the surrounding region. Most of our customers would market feeder calves either at weaning time or maybe 60 to 90 days after backgrounding some. Um, many of those customers also, in addition to marketing feeder calves, would retain some of their own replacement females. They're looking for um, high performance cattle that also have some maternal ability and some stability in their operations. It's very important that uh, those cattle will work here. I think uh, we've, uh, we've had the opportunity to send uh, or sell cattle across the northern Great Plains and actually across the nation. And we've actually shipped embryos abroad. So we've tried to produce cattle that, that will be very adaptable to many environments across the United States. The hospitality and focus on customer service provided by the Ellingsons extends far beyond sale day. They take as much pride in the relationships they've built as they do in the cattle they've raised and sold over the years. We have an annual bull sale the first Saturday in February where we welcome uh, many of our long-term repeat customers onto the seats. Um, it's usually a cold day, but, uh, but we've got a nice heated building and, and it's, a, it's a nice event to get together with, with not only our bull customers, but really our friends. We sure welcome visitors at any time throughout the course of the year. Um, we look forward to the chance to getting to know um, potential customers, um, showcasing our cow herd, um, getting, getting to know them and for them to get to know our family. Reporting from Ellingson Angus in St. Anthony, North Dakota, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Selecting the right bull for your herd to produce calves that return more dollars is important to any cattle operation. Reporter Lane Nordland visits a Colorado family operation working to produce Red Angus bulls with the goal of improving profitability for their customers. On the short grass plains of northeastern Colorado, Kevin and Sally Miller are evaluating their recently weaned Red Angus bulls for sale potential. We run about 250 cows, 
give or take, depending on what Mother Nature provides us. Um, we do it on about 10,000 acres. So if you do the math, that's about 42 acres per cow-calf pair for eight months, because we still have to feed four months out of the year. Because when you look around and you see the uh, short grass prairie that we're in, it doesn't stick around very long. So, um, you know, it's, it's challenging at that aspect, but um, if it was easy, everybody would do it. We have a bull sale every spring, and where we sell 60 to 75 bulls a year. And then the um, bulls and heifers that do not make replacements, we have a small feed yard that we um, will f usually finish them out in the feed yard. That way we can collect the um, genetic data, the carcass data, to um, help improve our herd. Genetic improvement is a priority at Crocent Red Angus, and an emphasis on balanced trait selection helps them to produce the best possible seed stock for their customers. We attack genetics from both sides a little bit. Um, Larry, our partner in this deal, Sally's dad, he looks at things from the feed yard side quite a bit, but I also look at things from the cow-calf side of it a lot, and I deal with the cows more than I do the feed yard. But at the end of the day, we have to meet in the middle and make those genetics work because from a commercial rancher's operation, that's exactly what they have to do. They have to meet in the middle. So we are looking for females that can survive in a semi-arid environment and then be able to produce a calf. A cow has a job description everywhere. And I would say here it is for you to bring bring in a calf every year and to provide a seed stock calf at least two out of three years. And so that incorporates all the genetic component that, that uh, we'll talk about here, but it also incorporates in, you know, growth and, and the other elements that, you know, docility, things like that. And then the other side of it is, is, you know, we're in the beef industry. We want to create, um, tasty, nutritious products for our consumers. And so that side of it, we look at carcass traits um, very much so. And, uh, you know, marbling is one of those, you know, big ticket items because, you know, that's where the taste in beef comes out. Kevin and Sally's cattle produce and reproduce in environments and with challenges similar to what their bull customers face. Our goal starts with the cows because the people buying our bulls they need um, some cow herd efficiency traits, you know, reproductive efficiency, um, some feed efficiency as well. But when I sit down and look at the goals of our operation, I think they're very closely mirrored within most of our commercial customers. Within our system, we try to manage them, manage our entire cow herd as what commercial customers would. And so um, there isn't an, a whole lot of added extras into anything. And so I think that's one of the places where you start is, does my system reflect a commercial operational system, you know, as closely as possible? Um, the other thing is, is we collect all the data. I, I have, I'm a spreadsheet monkey and I like data and I like to analyze data and make sure that we're doing the right things for our customers. And so when you look at these bulls, they not only have their year's worth of data back behind them, but they have generations worth of full data back behind them. The collection of herd data from birth to harvest has qualified Crocent Genetics for the top dollar Angus program. This certification provides customers with more opportunities to access higher value markets for their calves. We have to keep creating more opportunities to make the, a dollar because it, it's just one of those where you have to keep creating if you, you can't keep doing the same thing all the time or it just it gets stale so we're just keep looking at different opportunities one of the added benefits of um, customer service is is that we will actually provide the enrollment fee for top dollar angus and so when i look at our bull offering probably 45 percent of them qualify for top dollar for last year. And so as an added customer service, we want you to be involved in those types of programs because that, that gives you the most dollars back for your genetic investments. When you start looking at the 
um, backside benefits, you know, you're looking anywhere from five to ten dollars a hundredweight at weaning time going back into your pocket. And so we want to be involved in those types of programs that create value for our customers. We'll talk with the customer, find out what their cow base is, find out what their goals are with their cows, talk to them about what they're looking for, and go through the catalog with them individually so that they can help pick out the right bulls that meet their needs. Sale is the fourth Saturday in March. Several different ways you can bid. You can be here in person. Um, you can contact uh, myself or Larry to do a over the phone bid, or you can utilize DV auctions. Reporting from the windswept plains of northeastern Colorado, I'm Lane Nordlund for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about Crocent Red Angus, visit their website, CrocentRedAngus.com. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, see how a Wyoming family brought another generation back to the ranch. Plus, we'll check in with the always entertaining cowboy poet, Baxter Black. Don't go away, we'll be right back. No matter what job I've got to do, my John Deere 5 e tractor can do it all. Whether I'm cutting, moving feed, or building a fence. Using my 5E means my work gets done faster at a price I can afford, and that works for me. Hello everybody, Stormy Warren here from Sirius XM's The Highway. Congratulations on your record-breaking 2017 Cattle Industry Convention right here in my backyard in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, let's see if we can smash more records in 2018. Blaze a trail to Phoenix, Arizona and the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. Meet up with thousands of your fellow cattlemen and women and have a whole lot of fun. You can laugh along with the always funny Bill Ingvall at the Cowboy Comedy Club and get valuable information at the general sessions where you just might see this guy. Plus, explore six acres of displays at the NCBA trade show. Join me and blaze a trail to Phoenix for the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA trade show, January 31st through February 2nd. You can find out more at beefusa.org. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD-TV. Welcome back. Transferring a ranch to the next generation is a big step for many families. Russell Nemitz takes us to Wyoming to see how one operation dealt with this important issue. In southeastern Wyoming, just outside of Cheyenne, the Isley family owns and operates the King Ranch Company. Their diversified operation includes cow-calf, stalker cattle, custom hay, as well as a custom machinery business. The combination of multiple income sources allows the family operation to support two generations full-time back on the ranch. I couldn't be happier. This is a parent's dream. Uh, when you get along with the family, you can keep them close. Family operations are always a challenge because there's you raise strong, independent-minded family, and you expect them, and then you kind of want them to fall in line. Doesn't work that way. But uh, fortunately, we, we communicate wonderfully. Each of the family uh, holds stock. They're all uh, uh, holders in the ranch, and all have a working interest. Two of my three adult children live here on the ranch and work with me, as does my wife. I think what is unique uh, for our operation is how all three of us siblings have kind of gotten into something different, uh, that we weren't discouraged to try something different. I love the cow-calf operation, my brother does the uh, yearling and the backgrounding operation, and then my sister uh, is kind of the in-between. She loves both and she still comes back and helps with whatever she, she can and possibly do. So I think that that's encouraging to know that we all can uh, still have an individual area that we can be proficient in as well as help each other out. Parents have to be both mentors and partners. They have to figure out what the individual needs of that particular uh, family member might be. Some of them have an interest in machinery and maybe they want to take over the farming or, the, or those cropping operations. Other ones might have talents or, or intuition on livestock and maybe that's where their, their uh, emphasis should be placed. Getting a good education is paramount. 
I think uh, getting a background is, is important so you can relate and find out what some folks are doing. Sometimes other folks have uh, already invented the wheel. You don't need to try to do it again by yourself. Well, I kind of joke about my education just a little bit because I went to school for six years and got a bachelor's and master's in agriculture business and agriculture economics, and then I come home to ranch. But I, I like to tell people that I did go to school exactly for what I wanted to do, and that was learning how to increase the operation, get a more efficient operation, and uh, just make it a better opportunity for myself and my siblings, and making sure that my parents have a smooth transition to all three of us when, when they're ready to retire. The ranch's diversity allows each family member to focus on their passion, but also provides a chance to try new things. The Isley family members all agree that this freedom to expand creates ownership and satisfaction among each other. We have a lot of things happening around us. We have uh, the city owns property. There's an oil field next to us. The wind farm is on our out extreme border. And anytime we have the opportunity to do machine work for those people, we will. Uh, we'll excavate. We'll do water lines, pipelines, build a road, uh, maybe even roustabout work if necessary, snow removal. We also do custom haying, and some of that we sell, some of it we do on a crop share basis. That adds to our ability to purchase newer, nicer machinery and not carry it all on the weight of the livestock. It makes it uh, more comfortable and more fun for the family members who are involved in the operation. I like the diversity. I like the different things this place has been able to do. Because, yeah, if, if maybe feeding cows isn't your thing or doctoring or playing vet and, and taking care of the sick animals isn't really your thing, you know, you can work on machinery or you can work on uh, farming. They do the construction business now. You know, I have some interest in that. So I, I like that aspect of it. And if other operations can maybe learn from that and diversify a little bit, you know, maybe they'll find their niche. There's something they really like. And just even going down into a niche specifically, Maybe the ranch that you work at or your operation isn't working anymore. There's other things you can pursue, other things you can look into. The Isley family members all recognize that diversification is crucial to the success of their operation. Mark attributes his early success as a young producer to finding a specialty market, and he encourages young producers today to do the same. I think there's some great opportunities for young people. Uh, as we're watching uh, operators continue to get older and older in this country there are some opportunities for young people to step in they have to be creative they have to think outside of the box if you'll excuse the cliche look for enterprises that might fit uh, niche markets that might fit that's how i got my start with was niche markets no one did custom hay work in, in our part of the country but it worked for me to get into the cattle business we get to think outside the box here. If something doesn't work, we get to try something new and different. And maybe just the, the freedom of it is, is, it's cool. It's different, it's unique. Family members working together for a bigger, bigger thing than themselves. This operation has taught me that you can survive and you can adapt even with changes in the world. Uh, you can always expand it and make it better, make it easier. You don't have to always work harder. You can always work smarter. And that's what I think is important about this place. It's kind of taught some life lessons and you still get to work with the family. Reporting from Wyoming, I'm Russell Nimitz for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. If you'd like to learn more about what's happening with NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, you can find us on Facebook. Be sure to like our page and we'll keep you updated with photos, details on upcoming shows, and much more. And it's a great way to connect with other cattlemen and women all across the country. So check us out on Facebook. Still ahead, we'll have the latest from Baxter Black. Plus, We'll tell you about one Idaho operation's world-class genetics and breeding program. Stay with us. No storm is too powerful for Neopurina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breed back rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. 
Want more profit out of your pasture? Then here's our two cents on using parasite control to make some dollars. In a trial of calves, Long Range outperformed Cydectin and Safeguard dewormers combined by as much as an extra 40 pounds. Yeah, that's a lot of extra profit. And that's why it pays to treat cattle with Long Range. Do not treat within 48 days of slaughter. Not for use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older, including dry dairy cows or in veal calves. Post-injection site damage can occur. These reactions have disappeared without treatment. You can't afford another season without Long Range. Welcome back. Cattlemen know how important good genetics are to their operation. Brian Baxter takes us to Idaho for a look at an Angus operation that is breeding top-notch cattle for its customers. Just outside Idaho Falls, the sun is rising and the Riverbend Ranch crew is saddling up to gather a set of commercial cows. The ranch's commercial herd has been developed to fit the diverse and often challenging environments on the ranch. Our commercial herd is made up of mostly one iron cows that we've raised here at Riverbend. They're, I mean, they speak for themselves. We try to raise a cow that's going to perform, you know, in all, in all types of ranches. We've got a lot of desert ground, we've got some meadow ground, but most of these cattle have to work for it. I mean, so that's the kind of cattle we want. A lot of our ranches will start, like in, on my unit, we start in Dubois and it's all desert, a lot of lava rock, sagebrush, rough country, you know, I mean, we're running you know, one, one AUM for every seven acres. You know, when we get up into our summer country on some of the ranches we have, I mean, we have some lush meadows. We got 10,000 acres of irrigated meadow up on the Sheridan that we run mostly our stalker cattle. But most of the cows are on, on desert type, rocky, you know, mountainous terrain. So we got to have a cow that's going to hold up in, the, in that environment. Riverbend puts their genetics to the test using their commercial herd as the ultimate trial for their seed stock genetics. Their cattle must perform and thrive in the conditions that many of their customers make a living on. The big reason we run a commercial herd is, is to prove our purebred cattle. I mean, this is real life, you know, cows out here and doing what they need to do, what everybody else does. Not everybody raises purebred cows and, and we prove it with all of our bulls and what they do and what they're capable of right here on our ranches and in real life scenarios. We expect the most out of all our females. I mean, they have to be sound. They have to raise a good calf. They have to be able to mother on their own. We can't take care of them. We're too big and too spread out to be able to put everyone in, in confinement. I mean, if they're not sound or they don't raise their calf on their own, they don't raise a, a good calf on their own, they don't stay in the herd. However, proving performance doesn't mean anything if the cattle aren't sound and productive, and Riverbend is steadfast in their belief that cattle must be physically correct in order to do their job. We look for good feet. We look for size, but not too big. A real moderate bull that's got good structure that can travel. So a lot of our customers, you know, they kick their cows out, kick their bulls out with their commercial cows, and I mean, they've, a lot of them have to travel. So if you don't have good feet or good legs, then it's not even worth it. Well, it means everything. I mean, we, with the bulls we use, the cattle we run, I mean, watching our bulls and how they hold up on this kind of country, the, you know, the desert ground and, and even the mountainous country, we see the difference in our, in our bulls and the way they hold up. With all the choices available in the bull market, the team at Riverbend believes their proven genetics can make a real difference for commercial cattlemen. In fact, their commitment to customer service, coupled with their management strategies, led to Riverbend being awarded the 2016 Certified Angus Beef Commercial Seed Stock Producer of the Year. We got a lot of confidence in what we're raising here and we got a lot of confidence in, in the way they're going to perform. So, I mean, we're willing to stick our money where our mouth is and, and, and want to see our genetics out there for everybody else to be able to use them too. It's a big part of, big part of our customer service, I mean, philosophy to show to show what we can do with the same cows we're trying to sell to every other guy that raises a commercial animal. I mean, we're out here proving it every day and we want them to be able to do the same thing. I think we've got the best, the best going. I mean, if you, if you take a bull, say you're, you're not at the sale, you buy a bull, they deliver it, you don't like it, it's fine, we'll take it back, we'll replace it with something you do like. In addition, Riverbend offers a customer investment program. Confident in their genetics, the Riverbend team will be there to bid on customers' calves when they know where and when those calves will sell. Reporting from the high desert of eastern Idaho, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about Riverbend Ranch and their annual bull sale, 
visit their website, riverbendranch.us. Up next, it's time once again for our good friend, Baxter Black. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Blaze a trail to Phoenix, Arizona and the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the cattle industry's biggest convention and there will be education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can't afford to miss the huge NCBA Trade Show. Well, I think the trade show is a great place to get new ideas. There's no better place for cattlemen and women to learn and connect with fellow producers from across the country. The NCBA Trade Show is one of the great reasons to attend the convention. There's so many things to see from vendors to livestock handling, demonstrations, to all kinds of things, meat cutting demonstrations. It is a wealth of information. Plus, there will be top-notch entertainment and information that will help the bottom line of your cattle business. So blaze a trail to Phoenix and the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. January 31st through February 2nd. Visit BeefUSA.org for more. Did you know that Prefort makes over a thousand different farm, ranch, and rodeo items? And now, thanks to Prefort Direct, it's easier than ever before to get access to every item Prefort makes delivered direct to your local dealer. For more information about Prefort Direct, visit us at Prefort.com. Prefort, America's number one name in farm, ranch, and rodeo. When a new calf hits the ground, his clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives him his best odds, but if he doesn't get any, his time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford egg colostrum in their patented feeding system. Fill them with warm water, shake it to mix, feed it with a tube or nipple, and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Get yours at OxfordAg.com. Costs less than a dead calf. Just a word about one of the greatest genetic creations on the face of this earth, the Border Collie. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall fences in a single bound. The dog that all sheep talk about but never want to meet. The fur that legends are made of makes coyotes cringe. Sheep trip the light fantastic and eagles soar somewhere else. Away to me, I command. They streak and sail, zipping like pucks on the ice. Black and white hummingbirds in, out, up, down, come by sheep. With head up, one eye cocked over their shoulder, asking directions to the gate through the race. Mighty Dog moves behind the bunch like a towboat pushing barges around the bend. And heart, do they try? Just let me at them, Dad, stay. Come on, I'm ready, stay. Can't you feel me humming? Listen to my heart. I'm purring like a cat. I am primed. Aim me, point me, pull the trigger. Away to me. Makes me feel like Robin Hood. He leaves my side like an arrow. Working dogs is like manipulating a screwdriver with chopsticks, like doing calligraphy with a plastic whip, like bobbing for apples, like threading a needle with no hands, like playing pool on the kitchen table. There are no straight lines in nature, only arcs, great sweeping curves of sight and thought and voice and dog, always having to lead your command about a dog's length. Sheep bunched like logs on the river, dogs paddling in the current, always pushing upstream. A ewe breaks loose, then another, another, the log jam breaks. Dogs and sheep tumble about in the white water. Calm again, they start back upstream. Border collies, are they truly smarter than a chimpanzee? Cuddlier than a koala, more dedicated than Batman's valet? Can they change course in midair, drag Nell from the tracks and locate the missing microfilm? Yes, I believe they can. They are the best of the best. The epitome of above and beyond the call of duty. Head dog, top gun, I salute you. For man has never had a better friend. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks, Baxter. We sure enjoy our visits with you each week. We'll have more of Cattlemen to Cattlemen right after this. Stay with us.
Public land issues are somewhat unique. The Public Lands Council is um, valuable to the ranchers because it's someone out there that's speaking their language. Somebody has to communicate with the agencies, uh, the BLM, the Forest Service, Fish and Wildlife. Well, the Public Lands Council has provided incredible information and help, I think, to all members of the Congress. Everything from water rights to endangered species to wildfire to the need to actively manage the lands through grazing. And there's always a new battle coming up. Uh, the people on the land know much better what's good for them, their land, and their community than anybody in Washington ever will or ever has. So for them to have someone who is out there helping send their message and helping them keep their industry alive, that's super important for them. Uh, there's no way you can really put a value on what they do for us. So having someone in Washington, D.C., a, a voice for the industry, a voice for public land ranching, such as PLC, Public Lands Council, is huge. Welcome back. It's time once again for one of my favorite segments on the show, Legacy Photos, as we check out some amazing shots submitted to us by families from all across our country. Let's take a look. Well, that's our time for this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.